the caption for this morning meditation weapons of light part 2 the meditation of last week continues romans chapter 13 verse 12 romans chapter 13 verse 12 the light is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light the weapons of light works of darkness we should cast off weapons of light we should put on because the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore because of that we are to cast off the works of darkness and we are to put on the weapons of light the last week i understood from many of our believers and our web streaming listeners that this meditation was a great blessing i do believe the lord would make this continue to be a blessing to one and all what are these weapons of light weapon number 1 in this world when we are living between the crooked and in the midst of crooked and perverse generation we must physically a changed appearance because of the renewing of our mind our appearance should change that is our strongest weapon we are not conforming to the fashions of the world the fashions of the world pass away for this new way for this new style even in universities in america universities or schools in london and also recently in many universities colleges they are banning and the students they are very much against that ban say in the 20th century we must have the freedom to dress as we want but that's a new way the bible says we should not conform to the fashions of the world but because of the renewing of our mind we should be transformed we must know why we dress like this why we do our hair like this why we put a makeup on our face why how do i maintain my body my body that is the temple of god so because of the renewing of our mind we must transform that is weapon number 1 and weapon number 2 we should think soberly every one of us has a role to play in the church in the body of christ in your vocation in your family everybody has got a role to play and it would be it would be a, a, so for example the wife plays the roles of the husband and the husband plays the role of the wife maybe there will be a temporary peace but that's not a god blessed home husband must be husband and wife must be wife husband must give space for wife to be a wife and wife must give a space i use a management term wife must give husband a space that he could be a husband children should give space for their parents to be parents they should not boss over their parents children should not say daddy you don't know mommy be quiet it's rubbish it's nonsense it's devilish it's devilish nowadays because everybody talks like that even parents digest these type of devilish talks they think it's a love talk out of love out of affection the child talks like devil so out of love the child talks like devil no pa- children must allow your parents to be parents parents give space for the children to be with children so in every area we must think soberly i must know who i am that's the greatest philosophy i must know who i am i must know that i am the pastor 
I must know that. So I must give you a space to be believers. You must give me a space to be a part. You are giving that. Because I am your leader, I am your uh, elder, I am uh, episcopate, I supervise. I have to be harsh on you. When you come late, I have to shout. The other day when we visited a house, that girl, sister was sharing with me how she was rushing to the church. Uh, literally I was, I, I was little, I can say it, not actually tears, but I was moved. I am I harsh on the people, but give me a space to be harsh on you. Give me a space to help you. Then only we can play our role. So think soberly. This is a weapon. This is a weapon. You must know that you are a husband. And everybody in the family must know that you are the head of the family. Everybody must know your mother. You also must know that you are mother. Similarly in the church, similarly in the office. The role clarity is very, very important. That is a weapon. And number three, the strength of darkness is pretension. Having all hatred, uh, enmity, bitterness in the heart, putting a smiling face, that's a strength of darkness. And the strength of love, the strength of light is love without pretension. Love without pretension. So you must have that as the weapon. That is the strength of a Christian. Love without pretension. Number four, the weapon is abhor evil. Anything that is evil, evil is real. Evil is not imaginary. Evil is not the opposite of good. Evil is evil. Evil is just the absence of good. It's not the opposite of good. Evil is evil. Abhar anything that is evil. Number five, this is a weapon. Not only for your Christian living, to live as a Christian. To live as a Christian. The weapon number five, cleave to good. Anything that is good, ruthlessly cling on to that. Cleave to good. And number six, a lover's kindred. There are two types of love. How you love your family members and how you love others. But when you become a Christian, this is a weapon of Christians. Love everybody as your family member. Weapon number seven. When you want to greet one another, you be first. Outdo others in honoring. Don't wait for somebody to say hello. After the service was over, one person came and he apologized to me and he said, I take, I, I take a decision today. So far, only when somebody talks to me, I talk to them. Only when somebody says, praise the Lord, I will say, praise the Lord. I thought that I was shy. I mean, I was unable to talk to others. But the Lord has spoken to me. From today, I will say, praise the Lord to everybody first. I will voluntarily go and ask them, how are you? I will not wait for others to come and talk to me. I praise God that it was able to bring this wonderful change to somebody. Number eight. Uh, not indolent in speed. This slothfulness, this slothfulness literally doesn't mean somberitana. The word in Greek, it's very powerful. Wanting to avoid exertion. Wanting to avoid exertion. Just to do only that much. You are not willing to wash one more dish. You are willing to make everything. But just one more dish you don't want to. Uh, are you, you are ready to receive five people. You are willing to show hospitality, host five people. If it is six, you feel that you are unable to do. Suppose, just for an example I say, you have to spread some 60 chairs. You are willing to spread it. You are not willing to spread another five more chairs. You are willing to work 25 periods. But one more period you get annoyed. Everybody has got only 24. I got 25. I said, okay. Now they want to give me one more period. So I don't want to do it. That is that exact word it is used here. What is the weapon of light? When somebody tells you to go for one mile, you are willing to go for 
2 miles in your college in your school they ask you to take 20 periods in a week you are willing to take 25 periods in a week uh maybe my age permits me to say a f- uh, to say a few things from my experience but i am scared i am not bragging about it when i was a teacher they put the period substitution period when somebody is absent they will send some teachers to those classes to mind whenever that circular comes the substitution period every one will frown their face may by nature i would be very i was excited you'll have sitting in the staff room talking blah 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 or i'll just go to the library getting a period of substitution i was really i would be waiting for it. two periods or three periods i go i go i talk to them that's one of the reasons that helped me increase my knowledge also history period i talk some history of alexander or cyrus i tell them something about how the bible prophecy fulfilled if it's another mathematics period i'll take some puzzles if it's a science period i just start with the evolution some questioning etc etc i would be waiting for a substitution period you know sitting in the staff room and talking to somebody why can't you go and so robert simon was known to many of the children because i have attended all the classes many of the children some teachers they know only the children whom they teach i say that as a strategy i loved it i love to do the extra work i love to go to the extra mile say this announcements putting into powerpoint then putting that into an effect that arise and shine you might have seen that there is a easy powerpoint and those who are dealing with the powerpoint they may know how much pain that i would have taken why should i do that a joy in doing an extra work i say it's a weapon as the bible says it's a weapon even the spiritual work it's for your studies do an extra chapter do an extra sum in the homework in that exercise there are 20 sums the teacher asked you to do 10 sums you do 15 sums jab i enjoy that that's the weapon of a christian a joy to do extra work and be diligent in business whatever you are doing weapon number 1 vegam plus vivegam in tamil they use the word jakrade it's not that jakrade okay it's, you can say that it's a business give seriousness to whatever you do even setting the table even serving uh, feeding your own children that you think that you are doing a business sharing a word of god you think that you are doing business the other day i went for a meeting before me another senior pastor a very key person in the pentecostalic world he was he was asked to speak for a few minutes and he was speaking and everybody could see many people many of the participants they told me rather why can't the person the people are judging us he is not ready for that he was told already he knew but he was not taking that very seriously people will listen to me whatever i say no my dear brother my dear sister whatever you do do that as a business weapon number 10 be fervent in the spirit be bubbling is not the holy spirit within you a desire a commitment maybe the media that just to take the uh, 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 shoot the camera let there be a bubbling spirit all through the night all through the day meditate how you can do it better you go and Uh, to the uh, net try to study where you can get some more hints how to make a frame how to pan it when i bought the camera 
I studied how to make a frame. What is an effective panning? And earlier, now I don't do much. Earlier, the boys know very well. I came and talked to them. I was not a cameraman. But I studied immediately. It's not just sitting and watching that camera. So here it's a be fervent in the spirit. Whatever you do, try to find some way how you can do it better and enjoy it. Number 11, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord is the best thing. Be a slave to the Lord. Number 12, let hope make you glad. Not this ministry, not anything what we achieve in this world. The hope that Jesus will usher me into heaven. Jesus will receive me to heaven. That day Jesus will say, Good and my faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. That hope, that hope should make us glad more than anything else what we do here in the name, fame, uh, achievements. Number 13, our weapon number 13. Be patient in adverse situations. That's the strength. Be patient in adverse situations. And weapon number 14. Never give up prayer. Never give up prayer. Number 15. That's one of the important weapons. Take care of the saints in their necessities. It's not giving you a tithe. It's not giving you a offerings. It's not giving a vow offering or a faith seed etc. And all those offerings if you see one side it is self-interested. But distributing, sharing your talent, sharing your time, sharing your possessions, your wealth, your, uh, your things with a saint is based on love. You're distributing to their necessities. It's a great weapon, it's a great blessing. Number 16, Pursue hospitality. Pursue hospitality. The literal meaning is uh, seek to do. Seek to do. What is to do? To entertain strangers. That's a weapon of light. Talk to strangers. Make them comfortable. Smile at them. Say hello to them. Say, well, how are you? you? Introduce yourself to them. Allow to know about them. Allow to help them. Allow to pray for them. Increase your acquaintanceship with them. That's very, very important. And the Bible says it's a weapon of light. Now we are going to continue from verse 14. If you have got a copy of the Bible, kindly turn with us to Romans chapter 12, verse 14. Bless them which persecute you, bless. Speak good words. Speak good words. Because of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. We are not called to curse in the New Testament. Even when they persecuted Jesus, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Speak peaceably to others. Speak words that God could bless them. Always think good upon others. It's a weapon of light. When you bless others, you'll be blessed. One day, one of our believers, he told me, Pastor, I know the secret why God is blessing you and blessing the servants of God. It was an eye opener. I asked him, why do you say? What's the secret? He said, at least to hundred people when you pray, you say, Lord bless him. Lord bless him. Lord bless him. Make him the head, not the tail. Let his life be blessed by you. At least to hundred people when you pray, at least three times, you pronounce the words of blessing on them. That is the secret why God blesses you. It's a true eye opener. My dear brother, my dear sister, 
some time back only with an intention to correct somebody and also that's a truth i was to caution a, a young man and i was little severe in that cautioning but i meant it but when he was caught in a big trouble i was thinking lord said because of the words i spoke but he and the holy spirit comforted me this difficult situation should draw him much more closer to god so that could also be blessing the lord loves to correct him why do i say this the lord has called us only to bless us when we say don't touch the wire the live wire you will be get you will get electrocuted that's not a curse that's warning a person cautioning a person if you do this this will happen if you do this this will happen that's not to curse somebody but my dear brother my dear sister when you bless others when you speak good words when you speak good words on others certainly god could bless you and it will be a weapon my dear brother my dear sister try to love others even when they are not very friendly with you you extend a friendly hand with them for the glory of god i say this the lord the lord brought me out of a particular fellowship with that pastor with those believers there's no enmity i can say there was more friendship there's more friendship there's no enmity there are some people they left us there's no enmity with them also from where i came no enmity people who left us no enmity don't get offended more than those who are in those who are out they love me very much that's why one of our friends says to love me more they should go for some training and come back <laughs> when they go for a training and come back they love me more why do i say this always speak good to them even we learn from early people our former chief minister dr m karunanidhi kalanyar karunanidhi said once even when some people go out and be in another camp opposite camp he said i never speak a word i never speak a word that could hurt them even when they come back to me even when they come back to me so don't speak bad words about somebody tomorrow they will become your friends don't curse your own children it's a, it's a very pathetic thing they they put curses on their own children in asama pa ni urupada matta ayyo please i beg you i beg you don't use those words don't use those words don't put, speak words of curses ni pudi pandralla paar ni anubavippa don't speak those words sis. some people have got this evil nature to curse their husbands to curse their wives when they are hurt immediately to put curse on the par neke vanna karthar adi par what joy you get because your husband is punished what joy you get because you are wife slip and falls down you are going to carry her you are going to carry her yo this is a weapon of darkness you don't know what to do immediately say paare ne kartharo na addi paare ni poi tu varradukulla paare edho nadaka pogudhu yo please don't say that please don't say that when you are hurt also don't use words of i mean bless them i i just took the next point weapon number 18 curse not that's weapon number 18 curse not 
today take a decision that you never speak words of evil things weapon number 19 rejoice with them that rejoice this is again the work of the devil if somebody got has come first your child is failed some people they don't have the grace to rejoice with them that rejoice they don't have the grace your daughter's marriage is not fixed somebody's marriage is fixed i ask an honest question have you got a you may you may pretend but in god and you can you say honestly that you have got joy when you hear that somebody else marriage is fixed when your daughter's marriage is not fixed a uh, your marriage is not fixed somebody else's marriage is fixed are you i uh, have got a real joy your cousin your friend your relative your classmate your colleague his marriage or her marriage is fixed and there is a delay in your marriage when you hear about the marriage of the other person have, have you got the real joy honestly i tell you many people will not have the real joy on the lip level they say oh it's good it's wonderful they'll turn their face and say evana pudichalo theriyala eppadi mayakanalo theriyala ivalaiyum pa yamaadi varthe ava charin irukane some comment that bubbles out you are anger you are hatred you are bitterness you are disappointments you are your niece or your nephew your sister's son your sister's daughter got first class 100% your child got only 80% immediate reaction yara pathu copy adichala therilla paper evangaiyila maatichu therilla nonsense demonic diabolic you don't have the weapon of light you have got the weapon of darkness you have got the works of darkness in the heart you are unable to rejoice with somebody rejoicing you are not a christian you don't have a christian spirit as i told you the other day i am not blaming anybody if the hat fits your head you take it if the hat fits your head you take it do you have this christian nature or today you change today you change my dear brother my dear sister you want to buy a bike you could not get that bike somebody bought that bike somebody got the car truly it happened i had a omni van then i bought maruti 800 ac immediately one sister she is a very close relative the immediate response ஃபாஸ்ட் ஏசி கார் தேவையா இன் அ வேர்ல்டி லெவல் ஜஸ்ட் ஐ சே ஜஸ்ட் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் இன் அ வேர்ல்டி லெவல் எஜுகேஷன் ஜாப் சுச்சுவேஷன் மினிஸ்ட்ரி ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டிஸ் த வே த லார்ட் ஹஸ் பீன் யூசிங் மீ இன் எவ்ரி ஆர்ட் ஸ்டிக் in every yard stick i am not in one shade in one shade in a worldly level please excuse me in one shade i am not less less to less than we less to them one shade not less to them they had a car
when ac car the immediate spontaneous response ac teveya it's all because they don't have a nature to rejoice with them that rejoice i tell you it's a christian nature when you see somebody is blessed with something somebody is blessed with something have a nature to rejoice in some corner you feel sad you are not very happy you are unable to rejoice with others blessing you can immediately think still devil is working in your life still you have got some room for the devil the devil is making a hole in your mind in your thinking process the devil is making a hole the hole is big enough for the devil to sneak in the devil will possess you evil nature will possess you you must have a nature to rejoice with them that rejoice and also number 20 weep with them that weep you must have a nature to weep with them that weep if somebody has got a nature to rejoice over the misfortune of others i tell you that person is the child of the devil and the devil is making an entry in the life of that person akka tambi there is a small quarrel tambi is uh, hitting or doing something akka didn't know what to do akka says one word see ve kattaru nadi par par kattaru nadi par par ah he is just say just running out hit on the door or hit on the lintel immediately the akka say venu venu alla venu devil in you it may be just a joke but devil in you when you see somebody is hurt you are rejoicing that's not the weapon of light when you see your brother who has hurt you is hurt you must say achcho tambi when somebody suffers you must be willing to suffer with them that's the nature of god when people are in his wilderness the bible says god was with them in the wilderness god was with joseph in the prison god was with paul in the prison why should god be in the prison the greatest power of god revealed is not i tell you the greatest strength of god the greatest strength of god revealed is not when god delivered paul or joseph from the prison the greatest strength of god was when god was with them in the will prison god cannot be in the prison it is his great strength that he was willing to suffer with us when we suffer he can just deliver us that's a power his omnipotent power he can deliver us but to suffer with us to suffer with us is the greatest power of god god alone can walk with you in that wilderness sister the father may not walk with you if he has got an alternate your mother may not walk with you in the wilderness if she has got an alternate your children may not your co-bonds may not your friends may not walk with you in the wilderness if they got a better alternate when there is every possible alternate not to be in the wilderness there's somebody who is willing to be with you in the wilderness that is god and god alone can do it can do it in the name of jesus i tell you that's the greatest love that's the greatest strength that's the greatest power of god 
when there is a better alternative your mother may not walk with you in the wilderness your father your sister your brother your children your co-born your friends nobody when there is a better alternative you are staying in a hut your mother has got a palatial bungalow maybe because you were wrong choice or something today you are sleeping in the pavement maximum what your mother can do out of love your mother can bring you back to the house your mother may love to buy a house for you can you imagine a one night your mother will come and sleep with you in the pavement she can do it that is love that is love when jawaharlal nehru was put in prison motilal nehru was sleeping on the floor to understand how his son was sleeping on the floor my dear brother my dear sister develop a nature to weep with them that we when they are weeping don't rejoice it's all strength my dear brother my dear sister weapon number 21 chapter verse 16 be of the same mind one toward another this is a curse when the lord sends his curse upon the people one cannot understand the other that happened in babel in babylon in shinar one could not understand the other in many houses it's a very ordinary conversation wife tells her husband na solra engala puriyave illa you don't understand what i say immediately the husband says you don't understand what i say children don't understand what parents say parents don't understand what children say what language they speak they speak tamil telugu malayalam uh, english they know the language but the mind is not together the mind is not together they know the language but the husband doesn't understand what the wife says and the wife doesn't understand what the husband says cobons many time believers don't understand what pastor says and pastor doesn't understand what believers say when there is no one mind the problem is not the problem is not with the language the problem is with the mind the mind is different it's a scientific truth i have told you earlier when we are angry why do we shout why do we scream they are just 3 uh, feet away why do we raise our voice the very simple scientific fact we know the other person is not listening to you the distance has become great the distance has become greater greater and greater so you have to increase your voice the physical distance is the same the distance of the mind has increased so you understand a low voice is not enough a low pitch is not enough you have to raise your voice you have to raise your pitch because the distance has become greater so now in the church in the family the greatest weapon is one mind so how this one mind is possible my wife doesn't understand me or i don't understand my wife then how can we achieve at one mind one who wants to have a weapon of light please listen one who wants to have a weapon of light try to understand the other person the husband wants to have a weapon of light try to understand the wife wife wants to have a weapon of light don't say that your husband is not understanding you try to understand your husband you don't say you don't understand what i say try to understand what he says try to understand what he means try to understand what is in the bottom line try to understand what is in his mind you understand his mind not his words you understand his mind he understands your mind you become one minded 
mind is the very powerful place mind is a very powerful place the battle take place in the mind the mind the minds don't concur there is a very simple english saying you might have used it in different situations fools think alike you know the other part we always stop with that fools think alike fools think alike anybody knows the other part wise seldom differ it is two parts fools think alike and the wise seldom differ i don't know why we stop with fools maybe i think that i am a fool and you are a fool and we stop with fools why can't you go to the other part wise the wise seldom differ because the absolute is the same truth is always the same goodness is always the same goodness can be two different things what you think is also good what your husband think is also good what you think is also good what your wife think also good goodness is absolute i don't know it's a, it may sound philosophic but it is philosophic it is philosophic when my mind says 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and my wife's mind says 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 then we will be one minded can we be two minded when will this problem come her mind says 2 plus 2 is 4 and my mind says 2 plus 2 is equal to 3 then we won't be able to be one minded because in my mind i think 2 plus 2 is 3 and in her mind she thinks 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 we can't be one minded i should try to understand why she thinks 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 she should help me understand why 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 when i also think 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and she also thinks 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 we become one minded you all can be one minded only when you both come to the truth only when you both think what is good only you both think what is holy only you both think what is blessed only you both think what is the absolute then you can be one minded you we can't be evil for evil we cannot be one minded for evil you cannot be one minded i think 2 plus 2 is equal to 3 and she also thinks 2 plus 2 is equal to 3 we become one minded ananya safira both of them died this one mind must come with the absolutes the truth with the truth you both think the truth i think what is right you think what is right i think that we should dress for for the sake of decency we are living in the midst of crooked and perverse generation we must know why we should dress in such and such way and why we should not dress in such and such way i think and another young boy younger he or she thinks what pastor says is right i am we are living in the midst of crooked and perverse generation we must dress in such and such way we should not go with the fashions of the world that passes away and we should dress for the sake of decency i must have the witness that i am a christian she thinks in her mind i think in my mind we become one mind when i think why dress why we should dress in such a way and she thinks no no i got every freedom to dress the way that i like we are two minded nowhere we can come together probably the child say oh pastor has got nothing more to say that that's a very simple phenomena we cannot be one minded on the side of the evil we cannot be one minded saying i also say 2 plus 2 is equal to 3 you also say 2 plus 2 is equal to 3 we become one minded that one minded is evil that one minded is evil i think 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 i stand on it and you also agree 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 we have got the absolute truth anywhere universally 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 that's absolute there can be no doubt about it when we both are standing on the absolute we become easily one minded so the weapon of light is being one minded being one minded Weapon number twenty-two. We have to be very careful in understanding this weapon. Verse sixteen, part two. Mind not. Again, it's about mind. Mind not high things. Mind not high things. 
the world will say always aim at high things aim at high things the bible says in jeremiah chapter 45 verse 5 jeremiah 45 verse 5 and seekest thou uh, uh, and seekest thou great things for thyself seek them not and seekest thou great things for thyself seeketh not luke chapter 12 verse 15 jesus said and he said unto them take heed be careful take heed and beware beware of covetousness for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth the literal meaning is something like point 2 be sober mind be sober mind don't think more than what god or what you are affordable somebody has got a fridge maybe an almera type fridge immediately don't think that you need it right now you are unable to buy vegetables to keep in the small fridge you have got don't think great thing i must have that i must have a house like that i must also have a car my brother has bought a car i must have a car do we need a car do you need such a big fridge do you need that air conditioning can you afford for that my dear brother my dear sister don't set your eyes on the things which are temporal covetous the lord gives it's good the lord doesn't give it's good it's good the lord gives it's good If the Lord doesn't give you, it's good. Somebody wanted us to buy an auto, okay, it's good, you'll have an auto. Tomorrow somebody says, you must have an aircraft, okay, it's good that I'll have an aircraft. Only if I need it. Only if I need it. In anything, in anything, don't have that type of high thing. oh i should be a leader of the everybody says father father you are a spiritual father now i must have a big organization i must have a synod of my own i must be the leader i must have a association no don't think high things podum and manadudane kodiya deva bhakti godliness with contentment is a great gain When the Lord blesses you, get blessed. It's a weapon of light. The Lord will make you grow higher and higher. The Lord will make you grow and higher. But you have to be very careful. And just to save time, you go fast. Uh, seek not lofty things. Weapon number twenty-three. In English, we read, but condescend to. man of low estate uh, before i was preparing this message a brother he was in a high position earlier his wife was a doctor he came to see me from a very long way he is also in a retirement age for a long distance driving his car he came only to see me no other purpose in chennai just to see you and also he had brought an offering he wanted to be prayed for for that he came a long distance from a long distance in his car i love him very much he loves me many times we see that our uh, our thinking waves match uh, thinking wavelength match very much we talk so when this gentleman was talking to me he said 
Nowadays I don't take uh, bike. I go only in car. Certain times I go by bus. And it was very sounded very philosophic. I go by bus because somehow with our per, per, uh, uh, present situation we are totally cut off from the common people. what they think what they thought what are their problems we are totally cut off from cut off from common people that is why sometimes i travel by bus waiting in the bus stop i listen to what they talk i can also talk to them i understand them then i get into crowded bus then i am able to understand the problem of the children the problem of the ladies uh, how the common people suffer and I, uh, it was an eye opener as in the ministry we have got the opportunity to mix with all types of people and especially in our church we have got people those who can't read and write and those who got doctorates we in our church we have got people those who have got nearly five or six degrees and also somebody who has got no degree and no schooling so our church it's a little heterogeneous so i got opportunity to mix with all strata of people that's from the beginning the lord has given me that opportunity but everybody doesn't have the opportunity to mix with others and if you want to be a successful christian what paul really says here uh, but condescend to men of low estate what paul says mix with ordinary or common people try to be equal with them try to understand the problems of your servants try to understand somebody who comes and washes this is what my father taught me try to understand that person who washes the toilet try to understand the person who washes your dirty clothes try to understand the person who is working in the septic tanks in the drainage try to understand those persons my dear brother my dear sister in some religious system they a, a group of people people of particular caste they have to sweep the floor they have to clean the gutter they have to come and clean the temple they have to carry the woods but only one thing they don't have right to go in and worship those gods it's because of their caste they cannot worship in that particular temple that that's a religious system but the strength of light to understand that we all are made with one blood this is where our christianity differs from even other so called christianity they don't think that all men are equal there are churches for different caste people that's devilish that's not biblical even in those days when paul was especially writing to romans the other day i said Roman has got a very special thing they are the high high strata people metropolis capital city try to understand the common people condescend to the people of the low estate try to understand the mind of a murderer try to understand the psychology the other day i told somebody i want to understand the psychology of these people I was talking to one servant of God I said I want to understand the psychology of these people why do they behave like this what is their thinking my dear brother my dear sister I know some believers are especially blessed it's a weapon for them 
they can understand the people of lowest state they are in the lowest strata of the society forsaken forbidden considered to be untouchable the people of the world says dalit dalit means odukapattathu set apart separated no in the sight of god we all are one we all are because of birth because of financial situations because of social background they are different they are not like you but one thing you remember queen victoria said you have to stole her grandchildren i think you play with others but don't forget that you are the grandchild of the queen don't forget that you are the grandchild of the queen mix with every sort of people but don't forget you are a christian you are a child of god you are a child of you don't lose your identity here there paul doesn't say lose your identity don't lose your identity but mix with them try to understand then only you can be a successful christian leader you would be able to serve people these are very very important practical lessons uh, i'm just fighting against time i don't want to push it to next week i just go through the points point number 24 don't think that you are very wise in your own estimate uh don't think that you are very wise in your own estimate is not your tongue don't kiss your palm don't blow your own trumpet these are the english sayings you know so don't have a don't think that you are very good you are right let others say that you are right when i said this somebody said yarume sollala nanaadu sollikiren don't be uh, don't fool yourself like this uh, number 25 not evil for evil don't rank recompense evil uh to evil evil for evil that's not going to solve the problem that will make the evil double that will make the evil double in 17a recompense to no man evil for evil he has smashed your tooth in the old testament is said tooth for tooth you smash his tooth you knock off his tooth what do you get you don't get your teeth your tooth back only thing he has also lost his tooth you also lost your tooth your wife knocked your tooth off you lost one tooth and then you go and knock off her tooth and what the benefit you don't have a tooth she doesn't have a tooth then you both go and say it's only accident what is the benefit after all now there are two people with uh, no tooth uh, last, uh, with one no tooth one tooth lost so in the new testament is a very clear teaching because somebody has done evil to you and you do evil to that person that's not going to rectify your evil that's not going to do any good to you so he says number 20 uh, 26 consider in advance to be honorable provide things honest in the sight of all men the literal meaning is beautiful even well in advance that person knocked off your tooth your wife gave one bump you lost your tooth now you consider think how do you act honestly or your husband has done some evil to you or a believer or some unknown person done some evil to you what you have to do is the it may sound difficult but this is the weapon of light this is the strength of a believer consider how you can appear to be honest before that man do you think it's very difficult this is the weapon of light he has done evil to you you have done evil to him that the weapon of darkness tit for tat and the stronger weapon of darkness he knocked off one tooth i will at least knock off two teeth that's stronger i am not called 
அவன் ஒரு பல்ல எடுத்தான்னா நான் ரெண்டு பல்லே அதை எடுக்க போட மாட்டேன் தட்ஸ் அ கிரேட் ஸ்ட்ரென்த் தட் இஸ் த ஸ்ட்ரென்த் ஆஃப் டார்க்னஸ் பட் வாட் இஸ் த ஸ்ட்ரென்த் ஆஃப் லைட் வாட் இஸ் த பவர் ஆஃப் லைட் வென் ஹீ டஸ் ஈவில் ஐ கன்சிடர் ஐ திங்க் ஐ ப்ரொவைட் I provide an opportunity how I can be honorable in his estimate. What can I do for him to think me honorable? That's a greater strength. Yes, we can do it. Yes, we can do it. I go a little faster, verse 20, point 27 in verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men i i also misunderstood this word kudumanal yavarod samadhanam airka nadungal kudumanal if possible but literally it is not that it is not if possible no no ma i cannot be at peace with my wife oh she is a quarrelsome woman i cannot be with peace No, no, I cannot be at peace with my boss. He is an irritating person. Here it is not said that it is possible or not. Literally what is said, if it be possible, as, lies, as, as much as lieth in you. As much as possible with you. Vongalala mudinda mattu, kudumana lalla. Kudiya mattu. உங்களால முடிஞ்ச மட்டும் in one translation it says as much uh, do your best to live at peace with everyone do your best whether that person is incorrigible or not that's not the question i understood like that that's not the question i if possible as much as lieth in you உனக்குள்ள எவ்வளவு கெப்பாசிட்டி இருக்கோ எவ்வளவு கிருப இருக்கோ எவ்வளவு ஆவி நிறைவு இருக்கோ எவ்வளவு பலன் இருக்கோ எவ்வளவா இயேசுவன் ஏற்றுக்கொண்டு இருக்கிறாய் ஆஸ் மச் ஆஸ் லயத் இன் யூ ஆஸ் மச் ஆஸ் கிரேஸ் யுவர் காட் ஆஸ் மச் ஆஸ் கிறிஸ்டியன் நேச்சர் யுவர் காட் ஆஸ் மச் ஆஸ் த ஹோலி ஸ்பிரிட் இன் யூ ஆஸ் மச் ஆஸ் த காட் ஆஃப் காட் டுவெல்ஸ் இன் யூ as much as lieth in you one translation it says as far as it depends on you as much as it depends on you try to be at peace with others only at one situation all the grace all of the anointing all of the word of god i know the spirit dwelling in me it is not enough to be peace with that man if at all you can think somebody that you are unable to peace with that person with all grace you have got can you imagine the person you cannot be at peace with that person with all your grace with all the word of god dwelling in you you cannot be at peace with that person can you imagine that person anybody anybody is there a person that you cannot be at peace with with all the grace god has given you if that could be possible it was only devil and devil alone with the grace that you have got with the anointing you have got with the word of god you have got you can be at peace with everybody and 28 avenge not dearly beloved avenge not even so don't take avenge the simple reason I don't have time to explain everything. The magistrates, even in a worldly sense, only the magistrates got the power to give punishment to others. Say somebody hit you. Can you hit, hit, hit that person back? Can you hit that person back in the world? Somebody uh, somebody murders a uh, murders a uh, uh, son can you go and murder him so even in a worldly sense in a society you don't have the right to avenge even a magistrate 
an honorable judge of a court cannot punish an offender he can only proclaim the punishment then there is another body to execute the punishment we cannot avenge anybody even in a worldly level we can't take law in your hands god says it is to the law to avenge it's for me to avenge pali vaangudal enak uriyadu pali vaangudal means to punish that wrong to punish that wrong belongs to god even in a worldly sense it doesn't belong to us so you cannot do it for that you cannot avenge a wrong thing somebody has done something wrong to you you cannot do wrong to hit you can't hit back the husband hits you even according to the law you can go to the police you can't say my husband hit back so i hit him back you can go to the women station you can make a complaint only they can arrest you for the atrocity against women you don't because the husband hits you cannot throw a tumbler on him you can't throw a spoon on him you can't avenge one mistake you can punish a mistake because your child has done even the law because your child has done you can't hit the child my dear brother my dear sister there is a saying spare the lords spoil the child you read carefully you love the child before that you teach the child before that you do everything possible then when you spare the lord who has to handle the rod is a question the child has to be sent to a reformation center and there they will handle the rod the lord doesn't permit you to hit the child show your love show everything the best my dear brother my dear sister even a teacher doesn't have a right to hit the children my student is sitting here so i can talk boldly even today is one complaint because i didn't hit him in the school he is doing all these things his wife always complains like that ninga appame adikam muttinga now we don't have a right to hit anybody then what what how what do you mean by spare the law then give to the government to the magistrates veetla adanga adu oorla adanga my dear what, what do you mean we don't have the right to avenge anybody and spiritually it's not even the worldly magistrates don't go to the court it is the lord who avenges he is the magistrate of magistrates judge of judges king of kings he knows to give the right judgment so verse 29 chap uh, verse uh, sorry point 29 verse 19 the latter part but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay say the lord i love god when you punish god will not interfere when lawyer court punishes again supreme court cannot punish for one crime two people cannot punish that's a law the same law point is given when you do something god is not going to do anything allow give space for god to act some cases will take 6 years some cases will take 13 years some cases will take 25 years with god it may take little more hours give space so generally they say let law take its own course let law take its own course let god take his own course god knows how to deal it how to correct that person or how to punish that person instead of punishing how to make him a hell a blessing to you instead of punishing that person how to make that person love you god has got his own way to do it leave space to that god and finally verse 20 therefore 
because of all these things. If thine enemy hunger feed him, you are giving space for the Lord. You are giving space for the Lord to work. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger feed him, if he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, overcome evil with good. What do I mean? He is hungry, I feed him. He is thirsty, I give him a drink. What I am doing? I am giving space for the Lord to work. What is the space? God is a righteous God. God will give a right judgment. God is watching. God is watching what I am doing. What I am doing? God is watching. I am giving food to my enemy when he is hungry. So God understands. Okay, uh, right, right. I am giving him drink when he is I am not punishing him. When he is hungry, I am not giving him food. I am punishing him. So God doesn't punish him. When he is thirsty, I am not, I am not giving him drink. So God is not going to punish him. I already punished him. But I am giving good. So what will happen? Now God is watching me closely. Every move. How I drive. How I make a turn. How I go. What I do. God is following me carefully. God is following me carefully. And he will award accordingly. Now by doing this good already we might have earned him. So God's work is over. He has become a very good friend. So instead of our enemy is being punished, my enemy becomes my friend, is the greatest, and literally I tell you, it may sound politics, that's the greatest politics. There are 20 members in my party, that's a strength. You, know, you cannot see somebody put shawl on them, somebody put garlands on them, somebody conducts a big meeting, oh they all are our members. To whom they put shawl? When somebody from an enemy camp, he joins my party, I put a shawl and receive him. So what is the greatest that my enemy becomes my friend? My enemy becomes my friend. So what is the great strength for me? When he is hungry, I feed him. When he is thirsty, I give him a drink for him. Instead of my enemy getting annihilated, my enemy becomes dead, my enemy becomes accursed, my enemy becomes my friend, my great lieutenant, my great support, that is the greatest weapon. When I can make my enemy my friend, do good to evil. So God is closely watching. That's why he say, uh, it's a, I just read that verse to you. But rather, give place unto the judge, unto the magistrate, unto the wrath. Give place. Allow God to see your activities. He is closely watching our activities. Once somebody was driving a car, and he noticed a police patrol was following him very closely. He was making all turns. In every turn he was able to see the police was following him. He was little disturbed. He didn't know why the police was following him. He was, he was uh, uh, following all the rules and all that, but the police was following him. At one point, the police, the police uh, patrol overtook him and stopped his wake. He was little in jitters. He didn't know why. So the man got down. And the police came to him and said, Sir, uh, today we are celebrating, this week we are celebrating the safety week. So we are following how people are driving their vehicles. We are really astonished to see how you are driving the vehicle, following all the rules correctly, the signals, and how you are helping with the other people when they won't have a way. Really, your driving is superb. So we are giving an honorarium to you, thousand dollars. So that man got shot when he got the thousand dollars. He said, oh boy. So just casually as an interview, the officer asked him, Sir, can you tell me what are you going to do with this thousand dollars? He said, first I am going to take my license. Immediately his wife by the side got agitated. 
Sir, sir, because he is drunk, he is babbling something. The officer had a shock. That time the wife at the, at the mother at the back said, Hey, don't babble that you are driving a stolen car. My dear brother, my dear sister, God is watching us for carefully. Every move in our life, every turn in our life, every word we say, everything we do, whether we feed the hunger or not, whether we rejoice with the uh, with them that rejoicing, or we are angry when they are successful, or we weep with them that we weep, or we are happy with their loss, whether we estimate ourselves properly, we think soberly, how do we form our mindset, whether our mindset, we are able to, uh, we are able to find a harmony where we are, Uh, watch we are moving to the absolute the lord is watching carefully the lord is watching carefully and he should come and award us he said you are excellent your driving is excellent your christian walk like walk is excellent your christian lifestyle is excellent my faithful and good and my faithful servant night is far, far spent day is come you have got the weapon of uh, you have got the weapon of light come into the joy of your must he is watching his cap how do we dress how do we talk to others what do we do what do we buy do we think more than our own estimate everything is watching cap and he will honor us with his song shall we pray cast out the weapons of dark pretension may be a weapon of darkness love with no pretension is the weapon of light surely the lord will bless us may the lord help us put on these weapons shall we pray